Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to my video on how to use the remainder theorem to find the remainder of this polynomial division. So how do we do it? So we got to take that remainder theorem, we got to figure out what that is, right? And basically all it says is that whenever you have some function f of x, which in this problem, that's what this term is defined as, divided then by some linear function x minus k. It has to be in this kind of form. Whenever you have this, the remainder of this division will be equal to the function's value evaluated at k. In other words, what we have to do is find out what k is, and then we can just plug in k everywhere we see our x, and then we can solve that, and whatever that works out to be will be the value of your remainder. So there's two ways now to find k. One way to do it is to try to take this divisor and try to match it up to this form, x minus k. So you see one little bit of trouble here, that the, the x's match, but the signs don't, okay? So what you have to do now is you have to take this thing and make it negative, right? Make it negative. But if you make, if you change this sign, then you also have to change the sign of the number. In other words, this has to become a negative two because subtracting a negative two is the same thing as adding two, right? So this is equivalent to this. And what this now allows us to see is that it allows us to see everything lines up perfectly. So here's the X, here's the minus sign, and therefore what is here is going to be your K value. So K is gonna be equal to negative two. I don't know why I wrote X, but K is gonna be equal to negative two. Now that's all fine and dandy, but I, I personally like this method a lot better. Just take this thing, set it equal to zero, solve that for X, and then whatever you get as a result, x here equaling negative two, that is k, okay? Okay, k, k, k. Um, so this is going to be the value of k. Now, notice how it's the same, still negative two. The benefit of this method is that if you get now a coefficient here like seven thirds, all right, you can still do this method and still find the k value. But this is a lot harder than to kind of match that up because then you have a coefficient there and it's not simply negative two anymore, all right? So I really like this method a lot better. Anyway, um, okay, so now I'll leave the work up. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to, now that we found the value of k, right? k was negative two, okay? Uh, we're going to then take that value of negative two now and plug it in for every single x in your function. And we're gonna evaluate it. In other words, we're gonna solve it when x is equal to negative two. Okay, so just plug it on in. So five times that negative two squared minus two times negative two plus seven. Plug this into the calculator, and what do you get? I got a negative one. Is that what you came up with? Good. What, no? Oh shit. Uh, well, it's negative one. Just go back and double check the calculation. Um, make sure you plug in when you do it, the parentheses. Okay, that helps significantly. Plug it in exactly how you see it right here. Now, this is the remainder, okay? This is it. The remainder is negative one. So that's it, I mean, that's how you find the remainder. Uh, but what you can do, if you want to see a different way to do it, you can use synthetic division on this problem, and you'll also see that the remainder is negative one. Take a look. Bam! So the number of columns here, I have four of them, it's basically going to be equal to the highest power of x in your function and added one to it. So three plus one is gonna be a four, all right? So uh, what goes in this column is gonna be the coefficient of the x cubed term, this is the x squared term, this is the x term, and that's the constant. So the coefficient of the x cubed term is gonna be a four, coefficient of the x squared term is a five, coefficient of the x term is a negative two, and coefficient, well, constant, seven, right? I'm running through this because at this point, this, you should know synthetic division, and if you don't, I have 50 videos out there teaching you how to do synthetic division on 50 different examples, um, which I go painstakingly slow. So um, if, hopefully hopefully this, is, this isn't too bad. Anyway, then what you're gonna do, you gotta find the number that goes in on the outside here. So you're gonna take this, uh, oh my God, what's it called? Divisor, man, it still gets me. I have like, I t did like 200 videos on it, right? I still mess up dividend and divisor. Some things it just doesn't matter how much you practice, it ain't gonna work out. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter how many hours I sing, I'm not gonna be a singer. I'm just a girl in the... You see what I mean? Precisely. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take that divisor, x plus 2, set it equal to 0, 
solve that for x, and basically that value here, negative 2, is the value you're going to plug in here, negative 2. Notice how that's the same process of finding k, so this is basically k. Then drop the 4 on down, we're going to follow a simple series of steps. You're going to take this bottom number 4, multiply it by the negative 2, you're going to put the result in to this next adjacent cell. Then you're going to add this column on up. So negative 8 plus 5 is going to be a negative 3. Then you're going to take the negative 3, multiply it by that outside value, so negative times a negative is a positive, 3 times 2 is going to be 6. So you plug that in. Add that column on up, so that's going to be a 4. Then you're going to take 4, multiply it by negative 2, so that should be then a negative 8. Add that on up, negative 8 plus 7 is a negative 1, and lo and behold, there's the remainder. See? You can do it a whole bunch of ways. Obviously the first way is a lot faster, I think, uh, but you might prefer this method, I don't know. Sometimes I don't like, sometimes, you know, synthetic division, uh, you will find the remainder. Not only will you find the remainder, but you're also going to find the coefficients of the quotient as well, right? I mean, you find the quotient. You know, you can use synthetic division in a lot more cases on a lot more problems than you can the remainder theorem. I mean, you can only use, use the remainder theorem if you're trying to find the remainder. But you use synthetic division to find the remainder. You can also use it to find the quotient right? The, or the coefficients of any of the x terms in the quotient. I mean, it's a lot more powerful. So, you know, I I don't really like using the remainder theorem personally, because I, I hate like remembering more than I kind of need. Uh, once I have a method that kind of does a lot of things, I, I really know that one method. All right. And uh, yeah, it might not be the most efficient way, but, uh, you know, it's the easiest to remember, in my opinion. All right, that's enough of the uh, sermon. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this helped you out at all, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, maybe even tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help more people. If we helped you out, we might also be able to help them out as well. And also, if you're doing other, you know, studies other than math, if you got physics or chemistry, check out our channel because we literally have thousands of videos out there to help you through your class. We want to help you. We want to get you to your goal. Take care.